If you're new to the Steam Deck or PC gaming in general, you've undoubtedly heard the word shaders. It was probably referenced in a negative way too, because shaders can seem to be responsible for degrading performance, causing extra downloads, and tons of other stuff. But what is a shader? How do they work? Um, what is their relationship with the Steam Deck? All of these answers and more are coming up next, so stick around. Hi everyone, Shane Armin Rowe here. Shaders, the great mystery of the gaming world. If you're a traditional console gamer rocking an Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, or other closed architecture type gaming system, you've likely never been plagued with the dreaded preloading shaders animation that PC gamers are all too acquainted with. Now that you're a Steam Deck owner, you are technically a PC gamer with all the rights and privileges contained within. Before we get into how shaders affect your Steam Deck performance with gaming, we really need to know what a shader is and understand a few parameters around them. People like when I start off by telling you what something is not based on a common misconception. A shader is not a graphic to be cached like an image in a web browser. A shader is actually a piece of programming code written to run on a particular graphics processing unit like NVIDIA RTX or AMD Van Gogh, like our little deck here has. Some shader code might work with all GPUs, while other shaders only run on certain GPUs. Shaders are attached to graphics, say your player character or an enemy, but it could be anything that is displayed on the screen. So what does that little piece of code actually do? It adds to and augments the visuals of the graphic in question. Shaders were traditionally used to, well, shade a graphic to offer more realism with light and shadow. But shaders are far more complex now, able to take a primitive shape like a sphere and turn it into almost anything. We mentioned that shaders are specific to a GPU, right? That means the shaders run differently across diverse systems, like, say, gaming PCs. It depends on the capabilities of that GPU in that PC. This is vastly different for consoles. Why? Because every Xbox and PlayStation has the exact same hardware. From GPU to memory to CPUs, a developer is guaranteed to be running the same game on the exact same hardware every single time. And this will make more sense in a minute. So we know shaders are little GPU programs that make graphics look cool. So where does the caching come in? Like any other cache, the shader cache's purpose is to have a ready-to-go version of that shader that can be accessed without running the little GPU program again and again as you encounter the object. When the shader is run for the first time, it requires GPU resources, memory overhead, disk writes, to save the compiled version of the shader for easy subsequent loads from the disk. When you play the game again later, or traipse around the same areas of the game you're currently playing, the shaders have already been run and cached. So while the game took a little dump during the initial run, the second access is fast, uh, as long as the drive access is fast, of course, since it pulls the shader from the cache instead of running it again. I mentioned that a shader is not like an image in a web browser cache, and it isn't. But a cache is a cache, and you can relate a compiled shader to an image you already looked at on the internet. It is still sitting on your computer somewhere, waiting to save you time by bringing up that copy instead of fetching it from the website again. Let's take a look at this in action using the Yuzu emulator running the new Kirby game. As Kirby runs around this opening level, you can see performances, well, not good. Behind the scenes, as you move around, shaders are being executed and cached. This means a solid performance hit for the emulator. As I continue to move Kirby around new areas and new objects and enemies appear, you can clearly see in the status bar that shaders are almost constantly being run and cached. Now let's go back over the areas we've already been to. Note the shaders are no longer compiling. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. You can also see performances smoother, a lot smoother. So the system works, right? But you're probably saying, how does this help me? I can't play the whole Kirby game twice through, once to build shaders and the other to, you know, actually enjoy the game. 
You may have already started piecing together a few key things about Steam Deck and shader caches. Let's go that direction next. Steam Deck, while a PC in a handheld form factor, it doesn't offer the ability to change out GPUs, and every single Steam Deck has the same basic capabilities. It shares this feature with its console cousins. So if every deck is the same, you may have surmised by now that like a console, you could get pre-built shaders created specifically for the Steam Deck, its GPU, and for a specific game. And believe it or not, that's exactly what Valve delivers. You'll notice when you install a game, the deck will tell you it is downloading shader caches for the game. Now let that sink in for just a minute. Every other PC on the planet has to either pre-compile shaders before playing the game, or like Yuzu here, generate this cache on the fly as you play. And both of those solutions are not user friendly at all. Steam Deck is the first, and only to my knowledge, PC that downloads shaders for you in advance of playing the game for the first time. What a crazy, awesome feature. Of course, not every game has these caches available yet, and things like Yuzu or other emulators don't have the same feature. So the feature is great for supported titles by Steam, but for everything else, you're sort of on your own. There are projects out there aiming to bring pre-compiled caches to Yuzu and other popular emulators to avoid the Kirby incident we witnessed earlier, but the fact of the matter is that shader compiling and performance hits due to it are simply part of PC life. The best you can hope for is that the game has its own pre-caching, like Call of Duty, or that Valve supports the pre-cached downloads. We know SteamOS on deck will preload caches when it can, but there's another element to this cache in the deck we should cover. We mentioned earlier that whether you preload or cache shaders on the fly, these compiled versions have to be stored somewhere for fast access next time you view the graphics they're attached to. The best, fastest, and only guaranteed location for shader caches on the Steam Deck is, you got it, inside the premium internal storage area. For those of you with the 64 gigabyte model using a one terabyte micro SD card holding dozens of games, these shader caches can start to add up fast. The biggest ones seem to be about a gigabyte, moving down to a couple hundred megabytes, or maybe some have no shaders at all. Should you have a dozen heavy shader games, you could see 12 gigabytes plus of that sweet 64 gigabytes get sucked down into the dreaded yellow other category in your storage area. I have a video on that and we'll provide a link. Now that you have all this great knowledge, you probably understand now why Valve chose to put those shader caches on the deck's internal drive, speed and guaranteed availability. Not everyone will stick an SD card in there, right? After all, compiling a shader for speed doesn't make much sense if it has to be spooled in from a slow micro SD card and cause game degradation anyway. That's why Valve doesn't let you move it to another location and why people will advise you against using Linux trickery to force a move and relink to another drive. YouTuber High Tech Low Life did a nice video showing what happens if you choose to trick your deck into using a slower drive to house your shader cache. In some cases, there's very little hit, but as you can see with God of War, this game can be rendered unplayable by storing caches on slower, removable drives. Shaders are a staple of the PC gaming business, of which you are now a member. The deck does a pretty good job of trying to keep shader caches in check, but as you can see, it is a double-edged sword for a lot of folks. But we really need to be thanking Valve for coming up with this trailblazing approach to providing us with the best possible performance right out of the box. Listen, I appreciate each and every one of you who watch my videos. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all that good stuff. But just know that uh, we really appreciate you checking out the channel. Please leave a comment in the description below. That will help out a lot. I'm Shane Armonroe, and as always, thanks so much for watching, and take care.